Hello everyone and welcome to this talk about static type analysis of Python programs. I'm Raphael Mona and this is joint work with Abdel Rauf Wajaoud and Antoine Min. So Python is a really popular programming language these days. And from a PL perspective, it's a dynamic object-oriented programming language, meaning that it has dynamic typing where no type checking is done before running the program. Uh, you can redefine the behavior of most operators for custom classes such as um, and operators such as uh, index attributes and field accesses are also supported. You can use introspection operators to affect uh, the control flow of a program by looking at the type or the structure of an object. Uh, you can remove, add or edit uh, attributes of most objects at runtime and you also have this available statement. For more on dynamic programming language, you can check Lawrence Strauss overview. So let's take a look at an example program taken from the standard library. This function fspath takes as argument p. Uh, so using a first introspection operators, it checks if uh, p uh, is an instance of the string or bytes uh, built in classes. If not, uh, we check uh, using a second uh, introspection operator if p um, has a field fspath, and if that's the case, we try calling the method and um, we check the result before returning it or raising a typer. So, already from this example, you can see that there are two notions of typing in Python a nominal one based on classes, and a structural one based on attributes, and usually called duck typing in the Python community. Now, if you'd like to type this fspath function, uh, Typing line 2 and 3 is easy. Uh, the function fspath can take any string and return it, or any bytes and return it. And then uh, it also has type o to t, where o is an object having an fspath method returning type t, uh, and t must be either string or bytes. So, in static analysis by abstract computation, we're usually interested in detecting all runtime errors in a program without actually running it. In practice, uh, we perform the analysis by interpreting the program by induction on the syntax in a specific domain. And due to Rice's theorem, we compute approximate results, which may yield false alarms. And our goal is to provide an automatic analysis where no user interaction is required, and a sound one, meaning that if no runtime error is detected, none will occur at runtime. In the past, static analysis have been successfully applied to certify critical embedded C software. However, Python is a much more dynamic setting, and it also leaves less information in the syntax since we don't even have a type declaration of variables. Uh, so we believe that static analysis could be especially helpful, although difficult, on dynamic programming languages. I will present to you a type of shared domain for Python, uh, but first, we'll give you a taste of how dynamic and permissive Python semantics is. To do that, we'll focus on the example of the addition of two expressions, e1 and e2. Uh, so we first start by evaluating uh, e1 into a1 and e2 into a2. Uh, and then, depending on if a1 has an add field or a2 has an add field, and the type relationship between a1 and a2, we'll either end up calling a1 add, a1's add method or a2's add method. Then we'll check um, the return type and uh, depending on that, we'll either uh, give back the result or raise the typer. So this is a, a flowchart, but we also have a, a more formal semantics, uh, an, an input-output uh, semantics written down on paper. So now let's uh, dive into our type analysis of Python. Our goal is to have a sound analysis which infers uh, both kinds of types. With that, we will we'll be able to detect some runtime errors, uh, which in Python are encode exceptions, and we'll be focusing on mainly on type errors and attribute errors. Uh, by looking at this first piece of code, where a function uh, returns double of an integer or raises a type error, um, and is called once to raise a typer and then uh, is called correctly. Uh, we see that at line 7, uh, z2 will be an integer and there will be no exception raised. 
so this means that we'll have to perform a flow sensitive analysis which precisely handles exceptions. If we look at the second piece of code after line 5, z and x point to the same thing. So this means in particular that if you edit the attribute um, z.v, it also changes x.v. Uh, and this uh, implies that we need to handle addresses and aliasing uh, correctly. Uh, interestingly, we find back the result that exceptions and points to analysis are better combined. So here is a sketch of how the analysis works. We are back to the fspath function uh, from the beginning and we analyze the program by induction on the syntax from top to bottom. Uh, so first, um, p will either point to a string or a path instance. And in the case of the path instance, we know that we have an fspath attribute, which uh, can only be uh, a method. Um, then we store the definition of the fspath function, and uh, we arrive at the call to fspath of p. We inline this call, and during this inlining, we can see that um, at this point, p may only point to a string, and um, at line 10, that uh, p is only a path instance, and uh, if we inline the call to the fspath method, uh, r will be uh, an integer. So in the end, we'll know that um, either we have a type error or, I, or r points to uh, the string from the beginning. Uh, and this, let's show you a short overview of the technical components uh, used in the analysis state. So we use uh, the recency abstraction to abstract the heap into a finite number of addresses, uh, and addresses are abstracted by a twofold partitioning, uh, the allocation site and the recency criterion. The recency criterion allows to keep uh, the most um, recent address uh, separated from the others which are summarized and allows to perform strong updates on this one. Concerning types, so for the nominal types, we keep if an object is a class or an instance of something else. Concerning the structural types, we mainly keep a map from the attributes uh, to where they can point to. Uh, and since some attributes may only be defined in some branches of the program, uh, we also keep an under approximation of the attributes that are always defined. In order to analyze non local control flow operators, uh, such as raising exceptions or breaking out of the loop, uh, we store their continuation by partitioning the state uh, using these flow tokens. Uh, so to compare our approach with a uh, more classical type system, uh, we can notice here that uh, we put no restriction on the language, uh, while in classical typing some valid programs may still be rejected by the type checker. Um, here type errors are catchable exceptions, which mean you can recover from them at any point. Uh, we forced to do a flow sensitive analysis to be precise due to the dynamic typing, the introspection operators, and the exceptions. Uh, a fun fact is that uh, dynamic attribute addition changes uh, the structural type of an object, which is now mutable in some sense. Um, the notion of bounded parametric polymorphism in classical typing has uh, an equivalent, uh, which is a relational domain which will be presented just afterwards. And uh, we have, concerning interprocedural analysis, uh, due to the a really permissive semantics of Python, uh, we do a more costly context sensitive uh, interprocedural analysis rather than analyzing function in isolation. So um, let's get back to this uh, notion of uh, bounded parametric polymorphism or a relational uh, domain. So in this example, uh, if we merge uh, the results of uh, calling getSep on R which is either a string or bytes, uh, we lose the relationship that when r is a string, then sep is a string. And um, the goal of the relational type equality domain is to bring back that information. This allows us uh, to be more precise. So for example, then we'll be able to analyze this statement where we concatenate 
R and SEP without raising any false alarm. Concerning the interprocedural analysis, so performing a context insensitive analysis in Python seems really difficult. Uh, if we take a look at this simple function f, uh, this may call the add method of e1, which can basically be any function. So that's why we focus on a more on a context sensitive analysis. We started using using uh, inlining, which is the most precise but also the most costly approach. And um, then we have also have we now have simple cage, which keeps uh, the previous function analysis and allows us. Uh, to, to have up to a seven times speed up on our benchmarks. And concerning benchmarks, so we've implemented uh, this analysis into a tool called MOPSA, which stands for Modular Open Platform for Static Analysis. And in MOPSA, uh, we try to build only small uh, blocks, which handles everything from abstract values to iterators over the control flow. And then the, us the user uh, selects uh, the combination of the, these blocks uh, she or he wants or needs for uh, her or his analysis. And uh, we support uh, subsets of Python and C, and some parts of uh, the analysis of the languages are shared in a universal language, uh, such as uh, the inlining, for example. And this is uh, available now and uh, open source. So concerning our tool, it is sound and supports most of the dynamic traits of Python mentioned in the introduction, except for uh, recursive function, the super keyword, meta classes, uh, where the support should not be technically difficult to add, and also the evolve function. Concerning the uh, related work on uh, analysis of Python programs, so there is a data flow analysis by Fritz and Hager where um, exceptions are not supported. There is a sound um, type inference tool called Tipete, which is based on an SMT encoding and then calling the Z3 uh, SMT solver, uh, which and Tipete doesn't support dynamic attribute addition. Uh, there is uh, a tool called PyType, which is much more mature and used and developed by Google. Um, there is the R Python framework, which has an analyzer used to decide if a program fits um, the static subset in which they can compile more efficiently. And there is a sound um, value analysis uh, by abstract computation done by uh, Emric Frommert uh, and others. So concerning our benchmarks, so we've run uh, our tools and the uh, related works uh, on some benchmarks, which are um, so some tests from the uh, TPT uh, files, so with the rabbit uh, icon. We have some benchmarks from the official um, reference uh, interpreter of Python and uh, two uh, files from a Facebook utility called Pathpicker. And we'll mainly be interested in the uh, results of the configuration to of our tool, which is the uh, most efficient one. And so we can see that we're able to scale to uh, programs up to 2,500 lines of code in less than a minute and without uh, that many false alarms. Compared to uh, other sound tools such as uh, TPT or the work from, from Hertz and others, uh, we can see that we have a better scaling um, in terms of uh, programs and we have comparable runtimes uh, with uh, unsound tools. So, in conclusion, we've uh, shown you a new static type analysis for Python. Uh, it strives to take into account uh, most of uh, the dynamic features of Python. It's able to analyze real-world benchmarks, which are still uh, small. Um, and we have, uh, it is also sound, meaning we have a relation uh, between the analysis state and the concrete uh, state of uh, Python uh, written down in the paper. In future work, so there is some uh, implementation left to do to handle uh, some traits of Python. Uh, we'd like to develop a summary-based function analysis to uh, handle to analyze more efficiently programs. We also need to handle libraries one way or another to scale more, and uh, yeah, in general, we'd like to analyze bigger programs. 
Thank you for listening and I'll be happy to take any questions that you may have.